We're here with the star of David Byrne's American Utopia, David Byrne and director Spike Lee. Welcome. What's up, Cameron? What's hey, Hannah? Thank Good you. To thank you for having us. Good to see you. Love the film. And I am honored to have two giants here with me. We got Brooklyn and Manhattan uh, right here from the 70s to the end the 80s. Money, money the making Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I want to begin, before we even get to the film, by asking you two about each other, how long the two of you go back, what did you like most about each other's work, and how you got together? Well, David and I go way back. Uh, we just grew up really in the same era when art, music, independent film was, was, was happening here in New York City, you know, when young artists could afford to live <laughs> in New York City. And we crossed paths many times, and so I, I just, I knew sooner or later I'll be working with, with my brother right here. I just knew it was gonna happen. I started, yeah, I remember seeing Spike's first film, She's Gotta Have It. This was in the, in the 80s, and then ever since then. So we were kind of on, parallel tracks, we would cross every once in a while. And more recently, uh, I got calls from Spike to come over. I'm doing something about Brazil. He knew that I was a fan of a lot of Brazilian music and culture. We did something about Michael Jackson. So we kind of crossed paths a little bit. Uh, yes, and it seemed inevitable that at some point, the right thing was gonna come along and we were gonna actually work together. And this was it. Here. Yes. <laughs> so Spike, tell me about seeing David show American Utopia on Broadway and what about it made you want to make it into a film? Well, actually I saw, the first time I saw the show was when they were still in Boston before they oh, came okay. to Broadway. Uh, I got a, a, a great phone call from Dave. I didn't know, I know, I didn't know nothing about nothing. And he called me up, he said, I got this thing be interested. I said, when can I see? He said, we're in Boston. I said, I'll come on up. So I went up on a Saturday. I was like, I see two shows. Uh, flew up that morning. So it was a matinee and a show that night. Flew back to New York the next day. But from the, from the get-go, I knew I wanted to be part of it. So it was uh, the music, the narrative, the choreography, everything, everything I love. Hmm. You know, there's so much joy in this film, um, but there's also this real urgency, kind of a political urgency about just the, the, the narrative and some of the songs as well. Um, David, could you talk a little bit about bringing those two things together in the original show and why that's important now with the film as well? At some point I felt that uh, our, our, our country here and lots of other countries around the world we're kind of in danger of kind of rupturing and being divided, antagonistic, not being able to work together. All kinds of things are happening. And I thought, we're really getting to, to, to a difficult place. Um, and I felt that it became my obligation, my, my kind of duty as a citizen, I felt, to actually try and engage with this, try and respond to this, and I thought, I can't just be an entertainer now. I mean, if I need to entertain, but I also need to respond to what's happening in the country I live in, in the world. I thought, we have to, we can't ignore this anymore. We can't just pretend that, oh, we're just gonna go out and have fun. We, ha we have to respond to this. And I thought, how can I do that? I have to do that in the show, in a way that's not preachy, that's not, telling people what to think. So I worked on that, and that's kind of what Spike saw, that we were kind of working out the details of yeah. how to do that. It's in a number of the songs, that, that sense of um, we have to do something, we have to come together, we have to connect and care about each other. But the cover you do of Janelle Monae's Hell You Tombo is a showstopper, um, and it's an incredible roll call of uh, black Americans who've been killed uh, by police. Uh, Spike, you've done roll calls in some of your movies before, in Do the Right Thing, uh, in Mo' Better Blues. 
Uh, can you talk a little bit about this particular roll call and what it meant to you to also bring it right up to the present to George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery? Well, thanks for the question, but it really goes by the lyrics. And Dave and I were talking about this earlier, which has become this phrase, this, it's become also like a, a, a slogan. Say their names. Say their names. Let's not forget these individuals who are no longer here in their physical sense. They're with us spiritually. Say their names. Their loved ones will never see them again. Say their names. Let's not let this, you know, their murders be in vain. And, and David, what did that song and, and your decision to cover it for the show, what did that mean to you in terms of what you wanted to express about America right now? Uh, I heard that song a little before that. And uh, to me, obviously it's, it's a political song, but it's also, it's incredibly human and emotion and emotional. It deals, it, it asks you to remember these people as people, as human beings that lived on this earth and, and that not to forget them. So it really touches a very basic human emotion uh, in a way that I thought everybody can connect with that. Um, it's not dictating policy or partisan politics or anything. It's just saying, it's, it says that, and then you can, you can respond as a person politically to what you've heard. But I thought the way that this communicates these wrongs through a, through a song it was just extraordinary. I, I thought this is one of the best protest songs I've heard in a decade. Definitely protest song. Yeah, and that simplicity is part of what makes it so powerful, I think. Just simply saying their names is, is really such um, a potent thing to do. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about just the form. Uh, Cam, hold on one second. One thing yeah. I'd like to add as once I decided to, to, to join David with this great endeavor, I would try to see a show every week so I'd become more familiar with the material. And every week, I would go to David and say, you heard about this person got murdered? Yeah. And, and it never stopped. Yeah. It never stopped. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about the challenge of turning the stage show into a film, because it is an unadorned stage for the most part, beautifully lit, but really the, 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 the vitality comes so much from uh, the performers, uh, David Yu and, and your musicians and dancers. Um, and Spike, as you're watching the show, and it sounds like you watched it many times, how did you think through where the camera should be and what the camera should be doing uh, to bring that, that energy onto the screen? Well, it wasn't me alone. I have a great, great DP, Ellen, oh. Ellen Cures. We've, she's, yeah. we've, we've worked together many, many times. And the way she sees images is, is incredible. So Ellen and I saw the show uh, uh, several times before we filmed it. And we wanted the camera to be a participant, a part of the choreography. It wasn't just like setting up nine million cameras, stationary, just shoot, just record and put it all in the editing room. No, there are specific shots that were choreographed to the choreography. And I think that's what makes it uh, really brought alive and just the last thing, Mr. Byrne here did not ask me to record the show. <laughs> yes. He, he's not asked, that ain't what. I gotta he, hire a company to do that. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted me to, you know, to do what I do. Not just have cameras, static cameras, just shoot the show and then put it together in the editing room. Now nah, we don't, we don't, we don't roll like that. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you've, of course, also 
uh, you know, had the great example of Stop Making Sense, uh, Jonathan Demme's film. You've got a, already a great concert film out there. Um, one one of the all best time. Best people do that. What's that? One of the all time greats. Yes. But now you've got two great films uh, that put your music on screen, David. Um, I want to ask you about uh, two of the performers that really stood out for me, who, who are both singers and uh, dancers, primarily dancers, I think. Uh, Chris Giarmo and Tendai Kumba. Um, and the mix of, to me, what looks like contemporary choreography and dance floor moves and the gestures are so sometimes small, but very precise. Can you talk a little bit about their work and the choreographer as well that you, you worked with? Uh, the choreographer's name is Annie B. Parsons and uh, I've worked with her before. And Chris and Tendai that you mentioned are, are both trained as dancers, but they're also both great singers, which is Kind of rare, kind of rare. Um, so she could teach them her very peculiar and specific kind of movement, which comes from, you know, like you're, you're putting your hand around that brim of your hat. Now this is, this is a movement from, uh, I don't know what they all are. This is from an Okinawan folk dance. This is from this, this is whatever. And she put them all together and they were just incredible. <laughs> and of course, I'm up there singing and sometimes it wasn't until I saw the film that I realized some of the stuff that they were doing because I never see the show. <laughs> They're behind them. <laughs> yes. I'd like to add real quick. There was one thing that David denied me. <laughs> I kept going to Annie B, the choreographer saying, can't we spit another one of these? <laughs> 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 and she says, Spike, I want it too, but he just won't do it. <laughs> the yeah. thing. Please, Eddie, get on your knees, anything. Just, I just need one more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and she said, it ain't gonna happen. I left it alone after that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's brilliant work. And the... Uh, the moment where you introduce uh, the performers as well, and you talk about how they're from so many different countries, many of them immigrants, and that's an important uh, moment in the show as well. We're especially proud here in Toronto, of course, because Jacqueline Acevedo was given a shout out. She's from Toronto, the daughter of Nemo Acevedo, who's a, a well-known musician here for years. Great drama. Uh, can you talk about bringing that band together and the different sounds and vibes that you wanted for the show? The, I knew that I wanted to try and have all the band untethered, uh, wireless. And then that meant that I could have everybody move anywhere on the stage and I could clear the stage of all the risers and microphones and instruments and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, the technology's here, we can do this now. Um, I mean, just barely. It's, it's a lot, it's a lot of technology. I forget how many, it's like, 50 wireless channels, whatever, it's just like, so we had a special person that just took care of the wireless. Uh, so we had to learn how to do that. These are, especially the, the percussion section, the drum and percussion section, amazing players. They play as if it's one person on a kit, but it's actually six people putting all that together. And it sounds like one person, but at the same time, you have the feeling you have this feeling that it's not just one person. It's six people all working in perfect unity. Hey, can I say, it's yeah. almost like they're breathing together, right? Will you say that? They, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually are breathing together. Mm -hmm. it, it sounds like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, um, we're just a few weeks now from the U.S. election. There is a direct call to register to vote in the film, and the film is so much about trying to have a different vision of America than the very divided one we've seen over the last four years. Um, what are your hopes for the film? People will be seeing this in the, in the lead up to the election. What do, you, what do you hope this does? Can it shift people even a little bit? Well, if I may, if I may, David, I think that as artists, you can't always predict how you want your audience to respond. How are they going to respond? Are they going to respond? So you just got to believe in your, in your 
artistry and just put it out there and you know hope hope for the best i really do hope that people who were on the fence maybe there's a chance they see this film you know what i'm gonna register to vote that they were so moved by this piece and also taking in all the things that are happening in the world and not know that that this is this is this this is not some, you know, rinky dink thing. This is this is urgent. There's an urgency here, you know, for the future not of the United States, but of the of the world. So I hope that, you know, they, they respond. I'm hoping that the the people see the film, they will have that feeling of, yes, we can do this. We 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 can pull together and do this. We're going to vote. We have all this. There's a we. There's a lot to do. There's a lot of work to do. But that part. You, what you see in the film is people working together, yeah. and you go, yes, we can do that. And I and I like to add, since this is the opening night film for the Toronto Film Festival, T. Dot. We know they're gonna repeat as NBA champions, but that's all right. But, <laughs> and, I, and I'm sorry that, that, that your government has banned the Toronto Blue Jays to Buffalo, New York. <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo is not where you want to be, just let me tell you. But right. leaving, leaving that aside, I always think about, because I travel, I mean, before the pandemic I travel. And, and in many different countries. And I ask people, what do they think about the United States under this guy? And with the exception of, you know, Mexico, you guys are our neighbors. So I know they're Canadians are looking at what's happening in the United States of America saying WTF. Yes. <laughs> How like, could you let this happen? How? What is wrong with our neighbors below? Because <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Thoughts and prayers, my brothers. <laughs> You're in our thoughts and prayers. Last thing I want to ask. Oh, 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 Canada. Please. Oh, Canada. Please pray for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the last thing I want to ask, you guys both have a long history with Toronto as well. Spike, you brought many movies up to our festival. You've been here a number of times. David, I know that with the Talking Heads, you were touring to Toronto in the early days, in the late 70s. Do you have any memories of the city? You've been back and forth many times. Any memories of Toronto that stand out for you? Oh, last time I was up, we were doing some shows in... Uh, I visited is it Ward's Island, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, which I had never been to before. Which I thought, oh, this is. I felt like I just escaped the city. This is really incredible. Um, I. <laughs> why you ex why you have to escape Toronto though? It was just like, it's so near. I mean, I, it's, I, it's I heard. Like, I saw the movie Escape from New York. I never saw the movie mm -hmm. Escape from Toronto. <laughs> The first time uh, Talking Heads played in Toronto, we played at a place called, I think it was called A Space. Oh, yes. And, uh, oh, yes. It's an art space. It was a yeah. small art space. Uh, we were brought in by uh, a group of artists. Then there was a snowstorm, which hit Buffalo. We're back to Buffalo. <laughs> we, we had more time in Toronto than we ever thought we were going to have. <laughs> we had a great time. We were a great time. I got, um, yeah. I got another story about Toronto and the weather. The NBA All-Star game. Oh, that I NBA that. stalls, that NBA All-Star weekend in Toronto. Yeah. I have never been that cold. Yeah. In all my born days. Yeah, this I is got, we have to apologize. Damn. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Woo, that was cold. I had fun. But that was cold as a moon. I know. Also, again, probably never coming back to Toronto. But, you know, we had it once. 
Gentlemen, thank you so much for bringing your film to open our festival this year. It's an incredible honor for us. It's a great pleasure to talk to both of you. David Burns, Spike Lee, the film is David Burns, American Utopia. Thank you so much. Thank and, you. Thank you, and, and on behalf of my brother here, thank you, during this pandemic, thank you for choosing our film to be the opening night of the Toronto International Film Festival. And that's an honor. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you so you. much. Peace and love. Thank you.